No, it's not pretty, it's not perfect, don't hate me. See, that's the problem, that's why this happened. Me and an excavator is anything but gentle. I hit that line and broke it. Welcome back to the channel, glad you joined in. Today's project, I gotta fix the electrical line to this barn. Now most people would probably say, why didn't you just use one wire? Because what we did, and this is a little backstory, ran a wire from that barn to this barn. Well, in the process, I decided to open this door up. Well, originally I ran the electric line right here to this post, and I thought, I'll just make sure I'm gentle and I'll just run it underneath the ground that way. Well, me and an excavator is anything but gentle. I hit that line and broke it right about in here somewhere. So now I'm splicing on a section and I'm running all the way over to this corner in here to hook up where the breaker box is actually gonna go. And likewise, you see the two wires at that timber frame barn, what's gonna happen there is there's gonna be a breaker box inside there too. So a lot of fun, so let's get at it. And if you know, splicing aluminum wire is a lot of fun. So we're using a little connections and then we're putting this shrink wrap over the top of it. So that's what we're up to. This is actually the neutral wire. That's the other problem we have is when you, when you hit these lines, you gotta make sure you hook the right one up. Otherwise, when you go in there and you go to look at the green stripe, which means it's the neutral or the ground, however you electricians wanna go about it. But it's gonna be our ground and our neutral because you don't have a secondary ground when you have a sub panel. And I'm not going to get into electrical stuff because I'll have everybody fighting me here. What I'm going to do is actually braid these wires together. Sometimes we use a, a mechanical fastener. But I found that I can actually braid these together pretty easily. And it doesn't hurt anything. I think eventually we're going to run a new wire anyway. <laughs> Ironically, since I've jacked this up. So please don't hate what I'm about to do electricians in here they're gonna start screaming I know it and yes it's aluminum that's another misconception people say you can't use aluminum there's a lot of aluminum still used today you just have to be careful where you use aluminum and what rating you use it I'll bring you guys back in a minute once I have this completely crimped together the way I like I know there's just gonna be a ton of bad comments. This guy's an idiot, this guy's a buffoon. I can already feel, I can already feel the Captain Obvious questions. Sorry, like I said, it's a farming channel, not electrical, so don't hate me. You gotta clean that off. Like I said, I have a feeling eventually I'm gonna have to take this out anyway. get our heat gun which is painfully slow we're just going to shrink wrap this tube on for weatherproofing purposes it actually has a glue inside it that once we heat it up it will actually stick to this outer casing that's why I was cleaning it off there and it'll keep any dirt or water from getting in and then also so I have then also I have some special tape I'm going to put over top of it too and you can see it shrink in there I mean this Heat gun battery is about dead. We're gonna have to change it out, but and if I had a more powerful heat gun, it'd probably shrink even faster. You don't want to use open flame because you'll melt this thing. You'll melt it so fast it won't ever work. Small ones you can get away with a flame. But the big ones here, you, I've never been lucky enough. Maybe some of you have better skill than I do. And like that, we got it. I know it's not pretty, it's not perfect, don't hate me. It's gonna work for what we're doing. And it's good enough for this for the moment. It'll actually hold up just fine. Bury it down where we don't have to see it. So all we gotta do is fill in this hole and uh, we're done with this part of the project. And later this week I can come in and wire up that panel. 
and I can go over to that barn and get that wired in. And as long as I don't dig, I know, it's like two foot below ground now. See, that's the problem. That's why this happened was these people, this road right here, the wire's actually right under that gravel road. It's only three inches underground. I know everybody gets tired of digging and I do too. But when it comes to electrical surfaces, for the love of Pete, people need to bury those things 18 to 24 inches. I don't even care if that's more than code calls for. Because what happened to us was, this ground was higher. And you can see how high it was up there. I mean, this was a ground level right where that nail is. They built this barn on a hill and they never flattened it off. So what we were constantly having issues with, they built this barn on the top of the hill. They didn't flatten it out. So inside the barn, it was higher than outside the door. And then you were running up a ramp to get in the barn. So we dug down about a foot in the front of the barn. That's not where we hit the wire. Out there by that barn, we dug down three inches and hit the wire. So when we dug down here and didn't hit anything, we thought, okay, it's probably far enough in the ground or it runs off to that side and around. We were completely wrong. The prime example why you always gotta check for things. And no, Colin Julie would not have found this issue because it's on my property and the property owner before me put this in. So that wouldn't have helped me. So, fun times. Let me get this hole filled in and we'll start on the next project.